Okay, so what you need to begin is the package of beads that's just seed beads and O-rings. Um, check O's. I'm going to dump this packet out here. And what we're going to do to start is there are two O-rings in there, one for each connector. So I'm going to start by stringing on one of those O-rings. And I'm just going to tie off the ends of the thread on the O-ring. So, and I'm going to leave, I don't know, maybe a three or four foot, not foot, three or four inch tail. Because I'm going to want to weave that back in later. So you have to have enough room to do that. I'm just tying a regular old knot on there. So there's my O-ring with the knot. And I'm going to start picking up. First, My first row is going to be the green seed beads. So I'm picking up two greens. We're going to put these on with a brick stitch. So I've picked up two of the green. These are um, 11 O's. And I'm going to come through the hole on the O bead from the back side. Pull my thread. Separate those a little bit. And I'm going to go back up through the last bead added. And that starts my row of brick stitch. Uh, another thing I like to do is take the tail end and run it right up that first bead. And this makes that knot disappear into the bead. And now you don't see it anymore. It just uh, makes it a little neater. So there we've started the round. And I'm going to pick up now just one at a time and go through from the back side of the O bead. Pull my thread oops, and go back up through the bottom of the bead just added. And then I just snug it up. And my camera is falling off the table. Okay, I'm going to pick up one more, do the same thing. Back up through the one just added, snug it up. Just keep on going until we finish this round, picking up one at a time. Going through the O, going back up through the bottom of the B just added. These little connectors, you can find so many uses for them. They make really cute earrings and, of course, great connectors. And you can uh, play with all kinds of different colors of beads and sizes of beads. It's fun to mix up the, uh, you know, throw some shiny beads in with some matte beads. They're just fun to work with. So once you learn how to make these, you'll probably find yourself making them over and over again. Okay, I've come to the end of my round, and I've gotten that thread tangled up in there. Whoops. And I'm probably not going to be able to figure out how to get it out of there. I can't even see how it got tangled. Okay, well what we want to do is meet up with the first bead in the round, so... This is the last one we just added. Now we're going to go down through the first one. And then I like to go through the O. And then back up through. That's the first bead we added right there. And that finishes the round. So that's how it looks with the round finished. Uh, I think that's eight beads on there. Now for round two, I'm going to use the little orange beads, the little delicas in this set. Your set might be different. Um, I found that doing three rounds of 11 O's works out really nicely. But this set has delicas as the middle round. So I picked up two, and I'm using the bridging string on the first round as my foundation. So there's the start of that row, and now I'm going to go one by one, and it's just like the last round. Only instead of going through the O, the check O bead, you're going through the foundation string from the first round as your foundation for this one. And you just have to be a judge of whether you're going through the string that's on, you know, 
the right or the left side of the bead underneath. This time I don't think I have enough room, so I'm going to go under this string from the next bead. But it's a, it's a nice simple stitch. And it's a lot of fun to do. Great for a long car ride, as long as there aren't a lot of bumps. Okay, I think I'm going to turn off the video and I'll meet you back when I'm finishing this round because it really is just the same thing all the way around. So I will meet you back here. Okay, I'm closing up to the end of this round, so I just wanted to show you. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to tell if you should uh, add another bead or not. And really the most important thing, that gap I had looked like I could have fit two beads in there, but you really don't want to crowd these at all. So um, I am not going to add two. I'm just going to finish with that one. Because when you crowd the beads, it just looks really bad. So don't be tempted to squeeze another bead in there. All right, so there's the end of my second row, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen beads in that round. But it it really doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you you space them evenly and you don't crowd that last round. Okay, so I'm starting a new round, so I'm going to pick up two of the white eleven O's. Now your kit might be a different color. But, oh, whoops, yeah. See how that foundation thread pulled away like that? If you find that happening, flip your piece and work in the other direction. Because one way is um, the thread that's been worked for a while so it's nice and tight, and the other one is the one you just ended so it's, it's loose and will pull out easily. So if you find that happening, flip your work and go in the other direction. So there's that round started and now I'm just adding one more row of just simple brick stitch. So I think I will go ahead and you can see how to do this. I'll meet you back when I'm at the end of this round. Okay, I'm close to the end of this round, so I'm going to pick up one more of the 11 O's, and I'm going to go under that thread there to anchor it up through the bottom of that 11 O, and then I'm going to go down through the very first bead added in that row. I'm going to go between the two beads underneath so I can... Um, grab that foundation thread there and then I'm going to come up through the last bead added and that finishes the round. That's what that looks like. I'm going to see how many beads I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen beads. Okay, so that is an even number. So what I'm going to do now when we start the um, cube stacks is I'm going to um, straddle two of that row with every stack, and I'll show you what that means. But first I'm going to put away the extra beads. They're going to go to the second beaded connector. I'm just going to clean up here. And I'm going to get out my package of cube beads. It's got some seed beads and O beads in there. Okay, so this is the package we need for this step. Open it up and dump them out. Hope they don't go everywhere. Okay. So, to start this round, we're going to do 
stacks. And they start with the O bead, so I get a check O on there, a cube, and then an 11 O. And the very first one will get a jump ring. Uh, the jump ring is going to be the stop bead on this, this stack. So it's going to be the last thing on there. Oops. And the other thing is you want to make sure the jump ring is closed. I'm going to pop it off of there real quick and use a flat nose plier to make sure it's nice and closed. I'll show you this sideways. You can see that it doesn't quite meet up. I'm just going to squeeze it with the flat nose pliers. You can see it now so that the thread won't pop back out of there. Okay, so I'm going to snug all these beads up to the component. I'm going to go through that jump ring. And now I'm going to go back down through all the beads on the stack, but I'm going to skip that jump ring because that's going to act as my stop bead for this round. And now I'm not going to go back through the bead I came out of. I'm going to go back down in through the very next one because each one of these stacks is going to straddle two of the beads. So I'm going to tighten that down. And then I'm going to come up through the next seed bead in that round. So this one is straddling these two. It came, The thread came out of this bead, went up through the stack, through the hoop, and back down through that one. Alright, so now we're going to repeat that. Pick up a O and a cube and a seed bead, but we don't need a jump ring. The jump rings just go on the top and the bottom of these. So now this last seed bead is my stop bead, so I'm going to skip that, go back down through the other two, and I'm going down through the next seed bead. Pull tight, and sometimes you have to pull on that seed bead, adjust the stack to where you want it, right in the middle, like that. I'm going to go out the next seed bead, pick up another stack, The other thing, sometimes these little cubes are a little wonky on one end. They'll um, not be cut exactly straight. So if you do have a wonky one, make sure you come up through the good side and out the wonky side. That way your bead won't point a funny direction if the cut is wrong. I don't see any particularly bad ones in here, but it does happen sometimes. Okay, so that's my stop bead. I'm going to skip it. I'm going back down through the other two and down in through the next seed bead. Now I can pull this to get it where I want. Oops. And now go out the next bead. Since we have 16 beads on here, we're going to have um, eight stacks on here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so the fifth stack will get the um, jump ring on the bottom, but we're not there yet. So I'll pick up another stack. Slide the beads down to the component skip the seed bead, go down through those two, and pick up the next bead in the row. And then I, what I'm doing is just pulling this bead out so that I get the stack centered on those two beads, and then I tighten it up. Okay, so we're, we're entering the sixth bead, or the sixth, uh, sorry, the fifth stack. So I'm going to add a jump ring to this one. I'm picking up the O, the cube, the seed bead. Maybe, maybe, all right, let's be an ornery. And now I need a jump ring on this one. So there's my, oops, I need to close up that jump ring. So I'm going to grab it with the flat nose plier and squeeze it 
That didn't work out too well. I'll try again. Okay, you can see that's nice and closed. So I'm going to add the jump ring. And that is my stop bead, so I don't want to go back down through that. I want to go th down through just the beads and into the next seed bead in that round. So now you can see we have the top and the bottom on the connector. I want to make sure these are centered on those two beads, so I'm going to pull this out, move my stack to where I want it, and then pull down. That's better. Go out the next bead. And just continue on doing the stacks. Now, if you add up your beads and you find that you have a different number than I did, I think I had 16 total, so that was an even number, so everyone's going to straddle one. Hopefully you end with something that's either even or um, divisible by three. I like, when I have a number that's divisible by three, then what I do is do... Um, one stack that straddles, one stack that's stationary. It goes in and out of one bead. And then I do a stack that's straddled and then a stationary. That's The spacing on those works out nicely too. Um, what does not work out so nicely is if you have an odd number of beads that's not divisible by three and then sometimes you get a little bit of crowding but you, what you want is an even number of stacks so that your top and bottom are opposite each other it's a little more uh, work to figure it out if it doesn't uh, if it's not divisible by three or if it's not even so I'm just going to keep going adding the stacks and I'll meet you back when I'm adding this last stack Okay, so I just added my last stack on this round, and now what I want to do is go back through all of these spring, or the, the stacks a second time. And you maybe want to go through the stack with the um, jump rings on it a few times just to reinforce that, because that's the uh, stack that's going to take the weight of the necklace that you're making. So... This one I've come up through the beads and it's through the jump ring already. So I, I want to come back down this side, skipping that jump ring and into the second seed bead in the stack. So that's two times through. I like to go through at least three or four times. So I'm going to come over this one just going back a bead so I can go back up through that stack again okay so I came up through the cube I haven't been through the seed bead yet so I need to get under that bead And it's being a little stubborn. Okay. Through the seed bead. Now I'm going to go across the jump ring and back down. So that's the third time through on that. And it was getting a little tight, so I'm going to stop there. Now I'm going to go through all the rest of these and I'm going to do the same thing at this bottom one. I'm going to go in and out two or three times in order to reinforce that. It's easier to do the ones where um, there's no jump ring. I think I want to come out the second bead in that stack so that my thread only has to cross one bead instead of two. Sometimes you can wind up seeing the threads. If 
You have to skip along here to get to where you're going. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. So I'm going through that one. I haven't been through the stop bead yet. So I'm going to go through the stop bead and then back down and into the next bead over up through this one okay I went through the cube so I haven't been through the seed bead yet the little stop bead so I'm going across the stop bead and then back down into the next bead over and now I'm going to reinforce the other side of the connector really it's it's these sets that are the most important okay so I've gone through this bead the O bead the Q bead the stop bead and the jump ring all in one fell swoop so now I'm going to flip it over and I have to make sure to skip that jump ring going back down through oops okay and I want to come out the second bead So that's twice through that end. I'm going to come over, go through again. Okay, that time I went through all the beads, but not the jump ring. So I need to go through the jump ring. And now I can go back down through skipping the jump ring. And that's three times through that stack. Okay, so this whole side's been reinforced. The two ends have been reinforced. Now I just need to reinforce these remaining three. So I'll do that. I'll meet you back, and then we're going to weave in the ends. Okay, I'm just coming through my last bead to be reinforced, my last stack. And my camera's falling off the table again. Okay, now what I want to do is weave my way down to the beginning thread. You can see that's coming out right there. So I'm going to go through the Delica row, the little orange bead, through to the little green bead. And now I'm at a point where I can tie off oops, these two threads. So I'm going to tie a knot. Okay, and now I'm going to take the thread that my needle's on and I'm just going to weave my way back through a few beads. Going through th the green, the orange, and the white there. And then I'm going to come back down the next row. Basically, I'm just weaving the tail in a little bit so I can cut the thread and not cut it right next to the knot. And I think that's going to tangle things up right there, which is not what I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to cut off the thread that I'm working with and then I'm going to re-thread the needle with the other end. That end is done. Now I need to weave this end in a little bit. Um, this fishing thread is not flat, so I find that if I uh, run my nail against it, it flattens it out, makes it a le little easier to thread. Probably could have mentioned that at the beginning. Huh? 
All right, so I could have left myself a longer thread to weave back in, but oh well. All right, so I'm looking to see where that thread comes out, and that's where I'm going to weave back in. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go back up this one because the other one seemed a little tight. You want to make sure you don't uh, try too hard to go through some of these beads that have a lot of thread going in and out. The ones on these ends, you've gone through more times than the other ones, so it's usually a better choice to avoid those and use a different set to weave the ends in because they're already a little crowded. I think I'm just going to go up a couple more beads and then cut it off. Okay, that's it. Now you just have to do one more just like that, but look how cute these are. These you can turn them into earrings or you can use them for connectors. I'm sure you can find a lot of different uses for them, but I just think they're kind of fun. I have a thing for washers and gears, and I think I like the uh, square beads because it kind of echoes the uh, steampunkiness of the washers and things. So, okay, make another one of those. Okay, so you should have made your two connectors uh, by now, and I want to show you something. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but... These little tiny jump rings, you want to make sure that the threads can't slip back through them. I'll show you what happens when they do. On this one, uh, see where there's a missing set of uh, beads there. I opened up that jump ring and added some dangles to it and I didn't get it closed all the way and it slipped right out of there. So now I'm left with, well, an undone earring. So you want to make sure that these jump rings are closed real well. And that's also why we go through it a number of times. But a trick to making sure these don't open back up again is um, if you see a crack in your jump ring, you can add just a little bit of clear nail polish to it right there. And that will fill in the cracks. So, um, but I do that when I'm all done. So we're ready to add the dangles on here, and um, some of the earrings come with just uh, cube beads that you're going to make three dangles. One of them for the middle will be a little longer. And then some of them come with um, dagger beads for the center, so you're going to use a little extra wire for that. So first we'll go over the head pins. So Basically, I just build a little stack. You might want to refer to your instructions to see what order to do these in, but you know, you can wing it. It doesn't matter. It's just fun stuff. So I'm just adding a little seed bead, a cube, and a dangle, or a, let's see, a cube. That's a check O, and then another seed bead. And what you want to do is push them down to the end of the head pin. And then I'm grabbing with the round nose plier and I'm making a 90 degree bend. And then I'm reaching the other direction. I'm going under there. I want to make a little loop on the top. So I'm just spinning the plier backward, making a loop. And then I want to make sure it's open a little bit so that it will slide on. You see how that looks there? Now I'm just going to slide that on to the connector. And now I can grab that little loop with my round nose plier and hold the tail with my hands and wrap that around once or twice and trim it with the flush cutters. Oops, trimming that off. Okay, now I want to make one more that's identical to that because I like to have my left and right side be the same. So I started with a gold 11 O, then a cube, then a check O, and then a little white one. And 
and again I'm just grabbing with the very end of the flush nose pushing all those beads down toward the end of the jump ring I mean the um, head pin making a 90 degree bend then I'm moving my pliers I like little loops on these so I'm working right at the end of the uh, round nose plier Now I'll slide that on there. And now I'm going to hold across that loop with my round nose pliers so that I can wrap that tail around the stem. And now I'm going to trim that with the flush cutter. Now I've got two. I like to make the center a little longer, so I'm going to just add a few more beads on here. And you can refer back to your instructions to see uh, what the style you got has on it. Again, 90 degree bend. Roll it back to make that loop on the end. Make sure it's open sideways. Uh, there you go. You can see how it's open a little bit to get onto the jump ring. Oops, and now I'm going to place that one in the middle. And then grab with the round nose pliers so that I can wrap that tail around the center stem. Okay, there's that, and now I need to add a ear wire. So I'm going to, when you open these up, you want to twist the ring open. See how my fingers are twisting? You don't want to open the round thing this way. You don't want to make the circle wider. You want to open it sideways, okay? So I'm grabbing with my flush nose plier and I'm just lifting that side up. This is pretty stiff wire. But you can see how that's open just to the side. The circle part didn't get bigger, it's just lifted up. So now I'm gonna slide that on there and close it up. And there's that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you um, the center dagger option. Okay, for kits with a center dagger option, I've included some uh, thin copper wire. You're gonna need maybe three or four inches of that. So I've got about four inches here, and I'm going to thread the dagger onto the wire, and I'm gonna push maybe an inch and a half of wire out one side. So now I'm folding this wire back, pinching it together so it goes around the top of the dagger. And that short end of the wire, I'm going to wrap around the other longer end. Just wrapping this around once or twice. And you'll see those wraps are not really push down close to the dagger. I'm going to push those down with my flat nose plier. That's better. Now I'm going to trim that end with my flush cutters. So you can see what I have there is a dagger with the wire. Basically it's a wire head pin now. So now I'm going to stack on the beads that I want. I'm going to start with a gold and then a check O. 
Then another gold, I think. Another check. Oh, I like to have the center dangles a little longer than the sides. Then my cube and another gold. I think that's good. So now, just like I did with my head pins, I'm pushing all the beads down toward that dagger. And I'm going to make a 90 degree bend. Then I'm going to switch the pliers to this direction and roll back to create a loop on the end. That loop is open to the side a little bit. Let's see if I can show that on camera. You can see how that's open and will slide onto the jump ring. And I want that to go in the middle, so I'm sliding these apart. Going right down between those two. And now I can hold that uh, loop with my round nose pliers to hold that steady. And now I'm wrapping around that center stem. You can go once or twice, whichever you like. And then trim with the flush nose pliers. So that is the dagger option on one of those and the three dangle so there they are hope you enjoyed that now again um, you might want to go back with some clear nail polish and uh, go over the cracks in your jump rings so that you don't have these slip off but that's all there is to it